Mau Mau, Heroes of Pure Heart, stars the titular character Mau Mau Mau, a rising hero who defends the town of Pure Heart after accidentally damaging the magical jewel that had been protecting them all this time. He is joined in his fight against monsters and the Sky Pirates by two other members of the Sheriff's Department, longtime friend Badger Clops, and the focus of this episode of How to Play, Adorabat. Yo! My name's Adorabat! And I'm gonna impress you within an inch of your life! Adorabat is a young, native child of pure heart, but in seeking thrill and adventure, she quickly joins up with Mau Mau and Badger Clops as a hero in training, and becomes an equal part of the team. Being part adorable and part feral little gremlin, she quickly became a personal favorite of mine, and with the focus on being a hero, it didn't take long for me to start wondering, how exactly would I play her in a tabletop game? Her frantic energy combined with the adorable slash gremlin dichotomy felt like a fun character concept to play with, and the relationship she has with Mau Mau in particular, a potentially interesting dynamic to bring to a game. Which game, you ask? Well, of course, my favorite superhero setting game, Mask. A New Generation. For more detailed information on the Mask system, see my video How to Play Korra in Mask. For now though, I'll assume you know the basics so we can jump straight into figuring out the answer to the question, how do you play a Dorabat in Mask A New Generation? I want to be a hero! Well, at least one of y'all has taste. <laughs> As I've said before, the key to character creation for Mask is figuring out which playbook helps you play out the story and personality of the character you're interested in, and not really worrying about which one has the powers you want. Powers are just another story beat, and if you can come up with a good story with abilities different from the ones provided by the playbook, then go for it. So that just leaves the question, what is Adora Bat's story? Well, I think there's a few different choices, and the first is her relationship with Mau Mau, one of a student-mentor deal that makes it a good choice for the protege playbook. The protege is inspired by the relationship between superhero, mentor, and student, such as Batman and the various Robins. Its central themes focus on the students struggling with whether they are to follow in their mentor's footprints completely, or to try and go their own path. You can see this in the various mechanics spread throughout the playbook, such as the mentor and protege having one shared ability, but otherwise different abilities. The most important, however, is the mentor's embodiment and rejection of two different labels, representing a potential clash in philosophy of heroism between the mentor and protege. Think the relationship between Bruce and Dick Grayson, who eventually left to become Nightwing after deciding he didn't want to be like Bruce. And that's why I don't think the protege is actually the best playbook for Adorbat and Mau Mau. See, Adorbat is pretty happy to follow in Mau Mau's footsteps. Sure, there's an entire episode dealing with her learning to take advantage of abilities that she has that Mau Mau doesn't, such as the ability to fly, but there really isn't a conflict of ideology between them. As such, the central conflict of the protege playbook isn't quite present in this relationship, suggesting that a different book might be a better fit for Adorabat, something that takes advantage of her excitement at being a hero, being a guiding light of adorableness and her feral energy. And that something, I think, is the Beacon Playbook. Now, I've briefly discussed the Beacon Playbook back in my How to Play Korra video, but we now finally get the chance to talk about it in a bit more depth. At its heart, the Beacon is a character who wants to be a hero, driven by a desire for adventure, a sense of idealism, or following in the footsteps of an idol. The Beacon is the kind of person who jumps straight into heroism even if absolutely no one asked for them to do so. This often places them as the heart of the team, their energy and passion giving them a strong ability to connect to others and encourage them to keep up the good fight. They often don't have fantastical powers, making them the most human of the group, though even a powered individual could be a beacon if they find themselves having to constantly deal with being seen as not deserving the status of hero. To represent these high levels of empathetic ability and the desire to be a hero, the beacon starts with high mundane and savior labels. Now, admittedly, a high savior label is somewhat questionable for Adorabat, especially early on where her motivation seems more driven by a desire for excitement than saving people. 
Well, why are you looking at me like that? Oh, oh, I got it! Whoa, whoa, whoa there, big guy. Oh, <laughs> there you go. Wow. We got you. Wow. We got you. As she spends more time with Mau Mau, however, I do think she picks up some of that real desire to be a actual hero. But since we can add plus one to any label we want, let's go ahead and throw that at the danger label. The high mundane stat, I believe, though, is good for her, with her childlike awe and excitement helping her to connect to the rest of her team, and for all that she is a somewhat feral little gremlin, she is also a somewhat legitimately caring individual. It was nice to be loved, for once. I love you, Mau Mau. <laughs> What's wrong? <laughs> Nothing, it's just smoke in my eyes. Yeah, <clears throat> that's all. <clears throat> now, the thing that makes the beacon a popular playbook for many players is its extra mechanic, Drives. Being a list of cool things that heroes do, at the start of the game, you pick four things to accomplish throughout your game. Upon completing a task, you cross it off and can gain game bonuses, such as potential, which is basically experience points, clearing a condition, which is sort of like a negative status condition and narratively represents a bad sort of emotional state your character is in, or taking influence over someone who was involved in accomplishing that task, which opens up a lot of other game options for how you relate to that person. When you've completed all four things you've picked, wipe that out and choose another four options. And this cycle continues until you have completed everything on the drives list, at which point you either have to choose a different playbook because you've kind of graduated into being a different kind of hero, or retire the character completely. The reason this is a very popular mechanic is it encourages you to go and do everything a hero does as fast as you possibly can. Punching dangerous villains, pulling off stunts, traveling to incredible places, and all other sorts of things. This helps give direction to play, and is perfect for playing out Adorabat's desire to be a hero and to do everything like Mau Mau. Now, depending on your comfort level, you might need to talk with your GM about replacing some of the options, like getting drunk with a teammate, or the various romance-oriented options, especially if you want your Adorabat-inspired XP to be on the somewhat younger side of things. In terms of what to start with, at least, I think the choices are pretty easy. Punching someone you probably shouldn't, taking down a threat all on your own, pulling off a ridiculous stunt, and earning the respect of a hero you admire are all things that, to start with, Adorabat wants to accomplish as a hero, and so make good choices for your starting drives. Turning to the Beacon's moves, the Beacon is a bit of an interesting playbook. It starts off with two moves from its playbook, and able to pick up two more, but then you get up to three moves from any other playbook, something that's pretty rare in this game. And so this gives the beacon a lot of potential options. So I'm just going to stick to discussing the beacon moves and a few of my top choices of other playbook moves, but take some time to look at the rest of the playbooks and see if there's anything else that you think might fit her very well that I didn't talk about. So from the Beacon playbook, I would suggest starting with Straight Up Creepin' and Won't Let You Down. Straight Up Creepin' allows you to use your mundane stat to scope out a location and get information about it from asking questions of the GM. Scouting things from the air is a common thing that Adorabat does and helps the Beacon contribute to the planning stage of any mission. Won't Let You Down lets you spend two points from the team pool to add plus two to a teammate's role whenever you help them out. A big part of Mau Mau is the teamwork between the characters, and so using this move really lets you bring Adorabat's ability to assist her teammates into the game. For other moves from the Beacon playbook, I would probably pick pretty much a superhero, which lets you use your savior stat to brag about being a superhero when meeting someone for the first time, which lets you create your legend and influence how the world sees you. And while Adora Bat's not super braggy, though apparently in-universe she is a very popular hero, 
This is a very useful move mechanically because it helps you craft your personal legend and controls the extent to which your labels are being shifted by other forces by giving you an ability to control your first impressions. My final suggestion for a move to pick up is Suck at Domitian, which lets you use the savior stat instead of danger when directly engaging a threat while under fire, boosting up your ability to assist in combat in a heroic manner when facing a dangerous enemy that's got you pinned down. Now, the other two beacon moves, specifically Come On Lucky, which lets you have an animal companion to assist in basic moves, and No Powers and Not Nearly Enough Training, which kind of lets you get gadgets and stuff, are useful, but I'm not gonna really go into them because I don't think they contribute anything to playing Adora Bats specifically. Now, turning to other playbooks, like I said, we have a lot of options here because we can get up to three, but I'm just gonna focus on what my personal three top choices are. First off, you have You've Got a Head You Don't Need from the Bull Playbook, which I feel is practically required for a door bat because it allows you to use the danger label when provoking someone if you do so with an obvious threat of force which well you're not impressed by us well let me ask you this do you love your mommy do you love your mommy no 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 no, no. we'll get to that later yeah, this is basically required for the Adorabat experience. To play a per more trickster combat tendencies, the delinquents Are You Watching Closely is another good choice. When you mislead, distract, or trick someone, you can roll plus superior, allowing you to potentially get an opportunity, expose a weakness, confuse them, or avoid further entanglement. However, that reliance on the superior stat could be a problem since we're already focusing on mundane, savior, and the danger labels. Finally, as the beaconed and because she's a small child, a door bat is very likely to trigger the conditions for never give up, never surrender from the legacy playbook. When taking powerful blows from someone stronger than you, you can roll savior to get even more options in combat or to inspire your teammates. Now, Adorabat is a very determined young child who often finds herself facing enemies that are definitely on paper stronger than her, yet still ends up triumphing. As such, this move feels very appropriate for her. And it being from the Legacy playbook is even better when we remember that, based on the events of the episode Adora Dad, her mother also used to be a somewhat heroic adventurer type. Meaning that her picking up this move is a way to represent the continuing on of that legacy. Get it? Legacy playbook? <clears throat> anyway, Adora Bat approaches wanting to be a hero with the energy and idealism of a starstruck, thrill-seeking child. And channeling this desire into the Beacon playbook is, in my view, the perfect way to play out the Adora Bat experience in the mask system. If you want that protege experience, having a Mau Mau like NPC around who supports your character and encourages them isn't a bad idea and is encouraged by the backstory questions for your beacon. This is especially important because compared to the world of Pure Heart Village, the world of mask is very likely to throw plenty of individuals who question whether someone like Adorabat really is a hero or a young somewhat disturbed child who is in way over her head and should go back to school and stay home. But with the support of her idol behind her and the willingness to threaten those who say otherwise, I'm sure someday Adorbat will too become one of the world's greatest heroes. Thank you all for listening to yet another episode of How Do You Play? If you liked this episode and have your own thoughts about how to play a Dorabat or any of the other characters from Mau Mau and Mask, please feel free to talk about it in the comments. And if you've got suggestions for other characters, I'm always open to more ideas. And if you've also liked this, uh, why don't you go and hit the subscription and the like button and the notifications and all that other YouTube algorithm stuff. Again, thank you all for listening, and I will see you in the next game.